Ladies and gentlemen, David Stokes is hearing me vent off the air about some completely. He's like, okay, great. Can we get to my segment now? Uh, <laughs> Shohei Institute policy analyst David Stokes. Good morning, David Stokes. Good morning, McGraw. What's all this talk about a convention? We're not going to go for the Democratic convention in Kansas City, but we're going to go for one in. in no, we're going to go. We're not going to go for the one in St. Louis. We're going to go for the one in Kansas City. Right. The city of St. Louis has decided not to pursue the 2016 Democratic convention, despite right. coming. Very close for the 2012. Right. And Kansas City is moving full speed ahead with the 2016 Republican National Convention. Yes. And sort of made the first cut. Now they're down to the list of eight cities. And I think they've got a good chance. And, and I think both cities have made the right call. And I'm not a, that's not a partisan statement as much as some people would assume <laughs> it is. Why, why is it good? Because you don't usually win these the first go. You have to sort of... You know, like climb the mountaintop, you get closer and closer and closer, and then you ultimately win. Why did Kansas? Why did St. Louis back out now, and, and why is that good? Well, the stated reason, which I, I think is a perfectly viable one, is that they're so busy. You need a lot of private money for these efforts. So you have the city and and sort of nonprofits working with private donors to raise a ton of money. Right. And the city has said that right now it's doing that exact same thing for the art grounds, trying to raise a significant amount of private money to improve the arts, and they right. just don't think that they can successfully raise money for both the convention and the arts grounds. It's the type of thing where maybe both things are hurt by it right. if they if they did. And I think it's a very, I think it's the right call and a very, a a very legitimate choice. Yeah, okay, all right. Now, why is Kansas City, um, why can they raise all these private funds? Or I guess it's easier for them to raise the private funds. Well, I don't think they have anything comparable going on, such as, where they're seek, seeking private donations, such as the arts grounds, mm -hmm. and they've tried. They tried this four years ago, but they're really serious about it this time. And you have to view it sort of regionally. That it's it's sort of this swing state. Even though Kansas City itself is like St. Louis, heavily Democratic, you know the suburbs around it are pretty Republican. And then you've got Kansas, which is this very solidly Republican state right across the river, and it's sort of being pitched as a regional application. And I think that's why it has. A good chance. Sure, Kansas City is a swing area, but they're also appealing to the the Republicans just over the river, who are going to play a major role in the in the whole convention if it comes to town. Uh, where did where was the Democratic convention last year? Or last well, time? Charlotte. Very good. Where was the Republican convention? Tampa. Very good. I w I would have gotten Charlotte. I w I forgot Tampa. Um, but th they're not. There, it's it's not like the Olympics where you re remember the you know 1980 Lake Placid. So how how much? Well, it's I guess a good quick nice hit for a weekend, lasting value. Having a convention is not much. Well, it's it's easily overstated, and of course the supporters in Kansas City are already overstating that. <laughs> There's yeah these type of mega events are often sort of promised, be they conventions or hosting huge sporting events or, or other things, are often touted by chambers of commerce or economic development officials and politicians as huge, huge bursts for a local economy. And that, that part is generally very overstated, yeah. which is not to say it wouldn't be very good for Kansas City to host the Republican National Convention. It would, but they're, they're throwing around numbers now like it would bring $250 million to the local economy. And they won't back up these numbers. And the Kansas City Star has started asking some questions about what level of tax dollars are going to be involved. And, and, and the convention organizers are refusing to answer. So you've already got this transparency problem in that they are using tax dollars. Although, although to be fair, generally those tax dollars are going to be reimbursed by party funds and federal government funds. So this usually wouldn't cost the city of Kansas City or any other city very much. But you're using tax dollars as seed money, so you have to treat it as public money and, and answer questions from reporters. Uh, we in the media do not do a good job of this. Politicians don't do a good job of this either. But your point is well taken, uh, that uh, whether they're developers looking for, for TIF money or they're a developer or a convention person claiming that we're going to this, this, this windfall, Olympic organizers, all right, um, they claim – that it's going to produce this much amount of taxes, this much amount of jobs, this much amount of revenue, uh, and all of a sudden, no one ever five, six, seven years later goes back and says, well, you guys said X, and now it's Y. I had a developer tell me who will remain nameless. They said, the dirty little secret is that 
they with all these TIF programs and TIF developments, whatever else, they project so low that they say we need TIF or we're not going to survive. But no one ever goes back and says, wait a minute, you quadrupled. You said you were going to do X. You've done X times five. So you never really needed that TIF in the first place. If that makes any sense. Oh, it makes absolute sense. And sometimes you hear TIFs that are paid off early. Like right. Paid off. And so the developers say, look, it was a great success for the area. When, in fact, it really shows that you didn't need it in the first place. <laughs> right, right, right. So right. with these types of promises, the other, the other thing is sometimes groups, like we've done this, at Chomi Institute, we'll go back years later and analyze promises and expectations of various programs, and they almost never meet up with what was laid out or right. expected, but there's no cost to pay, meaning that the politicians who were in office 10 years before right. have probably moved on or are gone, and and mo- there's no way to recruit the the money. I mean, you just overpromised. Right. And it happens with sporting. Remember, the, the Montreal Olympics is the most famous example. They didn't pay off the debt from the Summer Olympics in 1976 until 2006. They had a billion and a half in debt in 1970s money. And often, so often, when you, if, I could, if your listeners can take anything from this conversation, it's when politicians promise you that the All-Star Game will bring in you know, $60 million to St. Louis, or just remember, usually they're applying very generous multiplier effects. They're assuming that nothing would be happening outside of that event in town. For, right. for example, in the Kansas City Convention, all these c- calculations will involve assume that there was zero people at the hotel anyway <laughs> right. there, as opposed to it was 60% filled and now it's 100% filled with the convention. So the difference is the 40%, not the 100%. Very similar to analytics in baseball, right? You have a 270 hitting shortstop. You're going to pay millions of dollars for a 300 hitting shortstop. You're really only getting 30 points. You're not getting a 300 hitter. You're, you're just getting 30 points better. Right, and so how much more are you, are, are you going to pay for that difference? Well, you'll pay a lot for that difference. And, well, right, 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 and but, and it's it's strange, and that's what's so interesting about the statistical, the good statistical study of baseball, which has emerged in the last twenty to twenty five years. Right, because you doesn't take, you don't have to go back very far to to think, wow, Vince Coleman's the greatest leadoff hitter ever. It's like, well, actually, Tim Raines and Ricky Henderson are both a lot – Vince is good and we love him, but Raines and Henderson are a lot better, and here's why. It's a, it's a great point. And, um, but those, but the, the, then, of course, if you had a development that couldn't pay its TIF back, they're like, well, what a failed development. Well, they needed the TIF because now it, it, clearly it, the market wasn't going to support that development in the first place. It's an interesting – it's a really interesting argument uh, and uh, a discussion, as always here. David Stokes, when can we read you? When can we see you at the uh, Show Me Institute Policy Analyst Subdivision Central West End location? Perfect. Thank you. You can, uh, you can read a lot of information about these types of promises and, and multiplier, multiplier effect claims and other types of oftentimes misleading. I don't yes. want to say I don't want to say intentionally misleading, but unintentionally misleading promises to get voters to approve certain things. At showmeinstitute.org. You can follow me on Twitter at David C. Stokes. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. You know, say, hey, we want the All-Star Game because it'd be a great event. And, yeah, we'll get a lot of money, but it'll be a great event. It'll be fun. We'll have the All-Star Game here. You get to see the All-Star Game. You get to be part of the All-Star Game. What's wrong with which is going for something because it's something to do? There's nothing wrong with that. In right. fact, that's usually the best way to do it and allow the economic development, allow the, the economic boom that temporarily comes with it, and boom's probably an overstatement myself, Right. allow that to just be a nice secondary effect to it. Yeah, ancillary. All right. Uh, 850. David Stokes, have a good week. Be safe. Stay warm. See you next Monday. Thanks, McGraw. 850. Talk a little Mizzou hoops. We'll do that next with Mike Kelly at Big 550 KTRS. Hi, I'm Dr.